I don't actually. Are they way too for there? Yeah, I think it's like 50 for the or 100 or something. I'll have to look at what. Do you have that? Yeah. Um, when I was. Oh, sorry. Go for I was going to ask you, do you know if the class tomorrow for history and diversity oh, is going to be that is a CE class, and I feel real strongly that most CEs have to be physically present. Oh, there is a Zoom option. Is there? I don't know if it, if you, it might depend on which you actually register for, but it starts at 10. Thank you. It starts at 10, 19, 25. I just looked at the email. So you, you need a new email address and just get on your phone on Zoom. As long as you're there before it starts, you're okay. Uh -huh. My experience is if you come late, they won't give it to you. Okay. The whole thing is super, super, super. Especially when it comes from SPAR. Like when the inspectors come in and teach stuff. Oh, there. Some okay. of them are strict, but some of them are. But when it's from the like SPAR or NAR, yeah, they do not mess around. Yeah. Yeah. That's no time for that game. If literally I was signed up for one, it was being taught here. This was, like this was a like couple of years ago. Yeah. And I, I, I know, know that's always like, like, you walking you whatever, at yeah. 10 or 1. Oh, and the like, instructor stopped talking and she's like, nope. <laughs> 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 I was like, hey, out you go. Okay. okay. So, what I was saying, I mean, you can just find it. Yeah, yeah. where are you go? Yeah. I don't have this before I'm not into this other application because it didn't need to be. Yeah, yeah. Yes, what I have it is what I did is design like a print out of all right. I get a stuff being Google, I think stuff being Microsoft. So I went to the two days now. I think it's but I just needed the picture of this. I need to make money. I can't. Yeah. And what I mean is, so, and one of the reasons I was asked for this is the Google that I got. And I made some copies. Yeah. I just figured at least people can take. Are you sending it to? I was just whatever. Well, one, what, 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 what yeah. I ended up doing and then did this. And then did it. Only thing is, other parents might be like, a lot of things on myself. I don't want to have a video from Dana showing how to do it with sheets. So you one, can do it. She doesn't have to do it. Yeah, yeah. Toddy's is about five minutes. Yeah. And this is about 12. Okay. And, and I, didn't hear I back will absolutely day. send those to you yeah. because yeah. I have a little file and just copy them. They yeah. share the whole file. <laughs> you have the letter in there and the two videos. And you get the whole little package. Um, yeah. But um, I the, the Google phone. Sheets one, you have to download the plugin. You know, so you have to go out and you have to add okay. a new product into the thing. And then yeah. you can't yeah. the problem. Yeah. If you're if your list is 150, 150 documents, you can't tell your computer it's 150 documents. Thank you. But you can't tell the print on 150. You see what I'm saying? So now he's going down this. It's a new document, too. It's not as easy as saying things. So it, in, in sheets slash word, it creates one hundred fifty page document. Yep. Whole, different, whole different set of things. And that's why we will talk about that. And I will say, I will share with you. We will do it in real life, and then the other part you're going to have to learn on your own because I don't want to have anything to do with that crap show. Not on that note, no, it's
terms of Anna. I'm going to pass these out and I'm going to make a couple more copies. This is the wording for an example of a letter. I'll be right back. <coughs> also, I have a thing. Good afternoon. Welcome to Road Coach. All that kind of stuff. Um, we'll be talking today about Golden Letter in a series of classes about Golden Letter. Um, if you were to do the process by yourself, you've never done it before, it will probably take you two and a half hours or more. Or more. <laughs> or more, depending. So we are trying to cut this down into as, as, as small as bite sizable digestible chunks, but there are a lot of parts of this process. And last week we talked, and we used Remind to talk about who we're sending it to. Right? That was what we talked about. Find an area. We use Remind to find an area of clients that we could send this to. Um, there are other questions that can help you answer who you should be sending it to. Uh, like what is the point of this and why am I sending it? Those are important questions. But at the end of the day, once you've got your who you're sending it to, the process goes a little bit quicker. Um, and when I say what or why, some example questions of what and why might be things like, Am I trying to get new clients or am I trying to visit this on my sphere? Those would be different sets of folks. And that helps define who you're going to. Um, do I need leads or am I trying to visit my existing folks, right? Well, yeah, and if you actually have a buyer looking in that area, which Jason brought up a couple, a few weeks ago in growth coaching, if you have a buyer in this market, you should be sending out a bold letter to the area that they're, they're most interested in. Um, or are you really just doing this for the leads and the buyer generate is listing. anyone in the market, right. yeah. Are you trying to answer the buyer's question or are you trying to generate listing right. leads? Because those are both reasons you might, how, or how you go about choosing who you're sending this to. Exactly. So, preview or review of last week and okay. what we did. But then the next stage is the letter. And there are a lot of debates about letter. But Sarah's handed one out, and I think we have a uh, we can have a quick discussion about letter. But the one that Sarah handed out is the one that I am most familiar with, um, and it is super super not wordy. Right. Like not even like oh just over one line. Um, um, the person who started this, I watched the like, whole video of him talking about it, and I think Olivia said this too, is, you know, a lot of scripts and whatever, you know, feel free to change a couple words or whatever to kind of make it your own, make it sound like you, but this one, they directed, do not change anything, and I just, I can't see it, I think it's exactly what mine happened. Pretty close, I think. Yeah, but, like, super, yeah, it's super just simple. Just yeah, okay. Yes, it was so um, yeah, Do, don't add anything, don't put a picture on, don't, I mean, knock yourself out, I guess, if you want to, but if this is the way that the guy is saying it, and he's the one who started it, and he's had a bottle, they've done a million of them, why mess with? And you've had, you've had some success, you've had some success, who else in well, here has sent some out? Until she sent me that, though, I did the whole, I tailored it with my and this yeah. is not a scam. And it I really seems have. like the way to go, but I got no response. Then Kelly sent me, which is almost identical to this. I sent out 300 of the first one with nothing. I sent 70 of this one, mm -hmm. and I had four responses. Wow. Oh, I sent 200 on this one, and I got two responses. Right. Okay. So eliminate no pictures, no any like. No, and that's why we are having this class because I think we hear the, about golden letters, we hear about what people are doing, but to, to know we've got several examples here of this wording, no fluff, no, you know, your name and phone number, and the, the very least you need to have Kelly Williams preferred realty on there, but keep it clean and simple. And we're gonna talk about the ins and outs of mail merge and um, that's like magic to me. So that is going to be all Jason. <laughs> um, 
But if you can utilize mail merge with this letter, it's actually pretty slick because it's putting their name in and their address in, which both personalize it. Kelly. Uh, some people don't know what mail merge is. Oh, correct. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So mail merge, and, and again, this is where the magic part comes into play, where you have a list of names and addresses and you have your letter and then some like wizardry happens and it puts their name as the dear she did it there you go I have and seconds. then it plops their their name their address into this letter she did it. it's amazing is this being recorded so we can go back and reference too yeah awesome um or yes <laughs> and i was i was hanging with you i was like i don't know the suspense. It is being recorded, but I am also, anybody who's interested, I will forward you two videos that show different ways to do it. And I will forward those to you because those are designed for this purpose. People like to watch, maybe if you like to watch me again, that's cool. But when it's done on the screen, the way that the, the videos I have are done, you can see what's on the screen far better than you can see what's on here. So the videos I send you will be far more instructive and useful for this purpose than re-watching this video of Sarah and I and the interaction. So, I mean, when we do a YouTube video, typically a YouTube video is a much better source than re-watching a Zoom. And I do want to take two seconds to comment on that. A lot of times we're doing workshops in here and people say, is that available on Zoom? And my immediate response is, just what happened to Shane. <laughs> because there are people out there making real videos with the documents right there in hand so you can see them in a much better format than this allows, right? I mean, if you've seen one of these later on our YouTube where we rebroadcast it, it's just not the same. And having, we have a buyer consult video that we put up just the other day. And that buyer consult video, there's the paper right there. This is where it is on the paper. And you can see it because the conversation and the paper are side by side. But that just doesn't, that's not the way we run this kind of thing. So. Videos over that. Scotty. May I circle back and ask if I'm the only one that would never respond to something like this, but would respond to something like what you're talking about? This is so impersonal and cold and it works for him. I totally get it. But is it working because it's something or is it working because it's only one sentence? You know what I mean? It's right. really gauged. Yeah. I don't know. As a consumer, all I, all I, all I think matters we've is tried different things. You've tried different things that got no responses. That makes me then different consumer than the people I'm working with, I guess. Because like I don't do postcards with uh, recipes on it, and that works for some, but they go straight in the trash for me. I feel like that's because we're realtors. I don't know, even before I was realtors. Like I if someone sends you something in the mail, oh, I, I just throw it away because like I hate mail. I don't want to. I, I won't spend stuff. any time talking about the postcard thing except to say this. I know they're throwing my postcard in the mail, but they're getting another one next month, and I have to see my name. <laughs> so I don't really care what they do with it. Right. right. But as far as this goes, for me, I agree that this feels very like, short and maybe cold. It's just system generated. Yep. But it's clear. But when I, when I get something from somebody that I don't know, and I might open it because, and this is what I want to talk about when we get to the address and stamp part, it's got a handwritten address on it or it doesn't. But for whatever reason, if I've opened that up and I see paragraphs of information, I will take absolutely no time to read that. Yeah, and I don't this, mean, you like, don't even have to. It. I had faithful, faithful clients that almost ditched me because they got a golden letter, I think from somebody in this office <laughs> that said, I have clients, John and Jane, grand staff or whatever that love Oakwood's neighborhood or whatever it is. It was so specific that they were like, is this legit? Like we should call these people and see if they want to make an offer. And I'm right. like, oh my gosh. So I think there's something to be said with the personal address and a little more detail than maybe just a system generated. If you truly have a client, if you're going to bat for your buyers and they want to <laughs> in spirit, then say my buyers, Jane and John, or looking in spirit or a whole bedroom had, home. I had the same thing. I, I had a buyer who wanted me to look in spirit branch. And so I sent out a golden letter to everybody there. And I started typing and I'm like, you know, oh, no, they're looking for blah, blah, blah. And I'm like. You don't want like to eliminate a, those they, who maybe don't have a loft or three bedrooms. Right. Or, but, and my thing was also how adamant people were about do not change the wording of this. So I talked to my coach. I have a maths coach. And he's like, nope, just, you know, yes, you have a particular buyer looking for a particular thing. 
don't change it. Send it out exactly like you did before. And so I did, and I think I have it, yeah, I've got it open right here. I ended up with 16 people who contacted me Jeez. in the spirit of ranch and wow. neighborhood in Lakeville. <laughs> I'm not saying I have converted any yet, but <laughs> no, you know, but those are all now 16 people leads. And, and some of them are like no, if it's not a fit, I'm not interested. We just thought maybe you know, some sure. original matters right. with this huge number. Mm -hmm. And that's fine sometimes. But I still have everybody's, obviously their address, their name. Um, I have all but one, all but two email addresses. That's good. I got I asked and Scotty about that specific. And I card stock and Xerox oh. my picture on there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was all fancy handwritten. I didn't get any response. Response so Scotty, you got to do what you think feels right and what what you know maybe you play around with it a little bit. So when I'm passing this out, I'm not saying this is what you have to do, but I've heard from enough people that this gets a response that I wanted you to at least have this wording in this format, and then you decide what to do with it, or maybe you decide golden letters aren't your thing. But they've clearly been a topic of conversation for a long time in this office. And I think there have been a lot of questions about people who want to do it, people who have tried it, but want to do it better. And then that's why you're here. So this is a conversation. This is not a, yeah. you have to do things this way. As a clarification, Scotty, that this is literally, I don't, this is a, I don't know. If I put a buyer's name in there, is that a breach? Of some kind of trust. I don't even know that permission. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, I don't even know from a fair housing thing if somebody might see a name and go, "That's a discriminatory opportunity." I, I don't. I don't. I literally don't know. You know, if I had the name like it, it was Juan Gomez, would my potential buyers make a decision? And am I inviting them to make decisions in a way that might be difficult or challenging? I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I see where you're going with that, but then again, if you get an offer submitted, they see their names, so they could be just as discriminatory there. So, yeah, I don't know. I'll, I, 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 I'll tell you my two cents. I wrestled with this too, and, and I talked to Kelly about it and stuff. Because I was like, do I have the buyer? Or do we? Like, I would, and she said, don't change it. And I was like, well, there's, <laughs> there's an I, I and says. there's a we. <laughs> and I'm like, if I have the buyer, I'll put I. I'll change it if it's the office and I'm using the office. But I think. You would shoot yourself in the foot over personalizing it because I've done this just one round and I can think of these buyers that I have that want to, you know, in the Apple Valley area, but until I see the inside of the home, I can't guarantee those buyers are interested. Yeah. They're interested from the outside. But I think that that's the reason you kind of depersonalize it because the goal is, yeah, maybe you have that buyer, but then you're trying to get the listing, but it might not be a fit. So that's what becomes the script. This lady probably knows the script by heart, but um, but, once I do call yeah, <laughs> but yeah, and that's what that's what I'm really interested in too. And I've tried some things and whatever, but I haven't been able to necessarily get in the house and get through that came back. So, but I also think if you if you get too specific in what your buyer is looking for, if I'm not if I get that letter. And I open it up and it says my buyer is looking for a four bedroom, two bath home, and I have a five bedroom, four bath home. Maybe I don't call versus the way this is worded, it's just super generic. And would you be interested in selling your home at to our client? I might want more information on that. So. Um, as far as time goes, I, I was contemplating like jumping back into Remind, but I'm going, I think we should, we should talk about the letter. I think Melbourne is going to take a little bit and then I want to discuss the whole addressing it, hand addressing it versus using a label. Um, I have some thoughts, but I also know that there are a lot of people that say to do the handwritten, not the labels. So, I, I, And I, one of the reasons I opened up that, that we will talk about who, what and why, I think those answers can change a lot of different sure. things. Why am I doing this can change what's in the letter. Why am I doing this or who am I doing this for or to changes address and stamps and ultimately getting into scripts. And I think we're best served by moving forward so we yep. can answer. Agreed. How do I answer these questions? Yes. Yeah. yeah, getting the letters out is a great step one, but if you don't know how to have the conversations with the people who call you back, 
That's you're really not where you're them. converting. <laughs> yeah. Because you yeah. don't know what to say once you send them. All right. All right. You're going to have a, a, a letter, a dummy letter. And when I say dummy, it's not because it's not smart, but it's just because it's not accurate. Um, hey, Jason. Yeah. Do you know what the video is on? It is on, and I just started sharing the screen. So oh, gotcha. See. Somebody just texted and said they can't. She said somebody you call her buddy. <laughs> hey, Monique. She's always good. Sorry. I know she's out there. We got two. We got two participants. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll let and you. And the other one is M. Corn. <laughs> but yes, I did start screen sharing okay. when we got to this point. So this is a, an example of the letter you want it in a document. I do want to touch on two things before we get going. Microsoft Word and Microsoft Excel are free 99. When I use the term free 99, they are not free. They have a cost, but in the end, they are worth it. If you have done this process in Google Sheets and Google Docs, it is more difficult. You need to take more steps to succeed in Google Sheets and Google Docs than you do in Word and Excel. Can you do them? Yes. Is it easy? Well, it depends on who you are. And is it more time consuming in Google Sheets and Google Docs? Yes, <laughs> unequivocally. Okay? The difference in the short term on this from a just a summary standpoint, not only will this be easier for me to do the mail merge in Word, but Word will create one document with 150 pages. I have 150 addresses. Where Google Docs and Sheets it will create 150 documents, which you need to save and move around your computer one at a time. <coughs> and to print them, your printer likely only will accept 15 print commands at a time. So then you need to set up 15 at a time, 15 at a time, 15 at a time, or I can print one 150-page document with one keystroke. So I say that Word and Excel are free 99, it is something that I have learned the hard way, and uh, I have learned it through the experience of other agents in this room. So what I saved in Xanax, <laughs> using I just got a word. <laughs> word and Excel are a far better fit for this. In the end, if you like, I have videos prepared by two great uh, admins within the office. Uh, well, an admin and an agent, actually, I should say, to be clear, um, who have show create videos for you to be able to do this in your method of choice but one of them is half as long as the other and oddly enough the shorter one is the word because it's easy it's just easy so if i didn't make it clear that i prefer words um i'll keep trying when you have your letter up uh the first step is to start a mail merge well should we all create a, does everybody have a letter that they're Using right now, no, yeah, go fire it up. Yeah, because let's fire one up quick if you got a couple minutes. Not going to work. Hey, Jane, when you get a chance, tell her thanks. She's really pumped out of my memes. I had her on there twice. Thanks, Monique. I'm really getting extra memes now. I'm feeling more popular. Twice as popular as it was just a minute ago. She's definitely hearing you. Sometimes if you've been to the Wednesday meeting, I sign in myself on my laptop so I can watch too, and I feel like I'm really good. <laughs> you just give me floating thumbs up in Sounds here good. if we're in person. Luckily, it's only a one-line letter, right? Oh, and when you put it in there, when you're making your letter, you want to use this name and these numbers. 
so that mm -hmm. when they call, they call the right people. Yeah. 612-209-9109. <laughs> I'm just, so I, I don't know. I use the office address. I have my name, but I always use the office address for everything, never your personal. Right. Correct. And, and hopefully your business name is more inventive than mine. Maybe something like uh, Ringdoza. <laughs> okay, this is not going to end well. Kelly, <laughs> email no. You know what? I don't think our my email has been on in a minute. I don't think I even put that on there because I want them to call me. Because the one response that I got, it's been the one. And I mean, they can dig and they can find it. Yeah. I think I think actually someone did do that. I think I did receive an email from somebody who you know Googled or whatever and, and found an email address for me. But yeah, I I think the the goal is to get a call and get you know to build up and talk to them. But the Google, mine has a email. I just moved it. I think it makes you look more yeah. legit. I have an email. I, I'm not <laughs> I'm not I have an email. I have an email. I'm a real person. <laughs> Is that a better one? Then I'll know it's real. They will absolutely know it's real. If you type your address as foreignprincessscale.com, it will know it's you. That guy is what I want to do business with. Look, they're doing business with people. So maybe that's the trick. But we're not those types of people. So you feel good about letters, letters in place? Yep. All right. Start mail merge. Letters. What? That's it? Yeah. That's a good question. So we go to File, Home, Insert right here, Mailing. File. So you see the file in the top left corner? Yeah. And we go across to Mailings. Gotcha. Do you have Excel? I was going to do that, but I forgot. <laughs> this is that right there. That tab is where you win in Excel. The literal tab is where you win in Excel. So once you've clicked on Start Mail Merge, then you need to select your recipient. And you're going to use an existing list that you've already created. You save your card from Remine or what have you, and you'll have to find that existing list. Uh, mine happens to be. Select recipients. Next oh, to the start mail merge. Select recipients. Use an existing list. So I saved this one earlier from Remind. It's just a spreadsheet with everybody's listings in Lakeville. You might end up, if we do this, I have this strong feeling. Where does it go? I don't know. It doesn't matter. I really <coughs> don't know. All right. Um, but it's there somewhere. It's gone. If you clicked it, it's good. It's there. I promise it'll be there. Um, For some oh. reason, when you say you have no idea, it makes me. <laughs> yes, he doesn't know. Okay, don't know. We all don't know together. <laughs> exactly, and here is where it does. It, there is a little bit of some challenge. Uh, when I say challenge, all I'm going to yeah. do is going to replace this name, and under the select recipients thing, there. Or I'm sorry, uh, insert merge field. All right. So, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace name with one of the fields, and I have to tell it which field I'm replacing it with. Okay, does that make sense? We're on that base. In this case, I'm going to replace it with the owner's full name. Gives me a list of every field. Every one of these is a field that was in that spreadsheet I had. So you may have less, or you may have more if your spreadsheet had fewer or more items. But in this case, I'm going to do full name. You could choose to do owner one first name, put an ampersand, and then put <coughs> owner two first name, right? So if there was a couple that owned the house, that would be Joe and Shelly. And then owner last name, you can do any sort of thing that you want to make this thing lay out using the fields that are there, depending on what your fields, your spreadsheet look like. I am just going to put owner one full name. And you get all kinds of weird stuff. So you get Joe ampersand, and then a space. Well, there's not. A, there's just the one space, and then the last name. So it's Joe and or we'd say Sarah ampersand Anderson. Yeah. That would be weird. So then you'd have to manually go and edit them all out. On the other side, to be fair, Sarah could be really mad that I only send this to her husband. She could be. Because by choosing owner one full name, I ruled out all the other opportunities. But when I choose that owner one full name, because I've changed that highlighted section to owner one full name. Uh, then I'm going to change the street address. Again, insert merge field, uh, mailing address, street, or house number and street. Mailing address, depending on what you have in your thing, it's going to take care of that individually. Uh, city, I have to put a space in there because I just like a space for. Mailing city. State to finally the merge field mailing zip five. Mailing zip four is that extra four digits. It may or may not be in your thing. If you've ever done zip plus four, it's super exciting. Um, because I put mailing street in there, I do need to insert a mailing house number. So it now would show up, would you consider selling your home at mailing house number, mailing street, mailing city, mailing state, mailing zip to a client of mine? If so, please call it, yay! Right? Like, are we even, square? I'm highlighting and doing that right now. Okay. I am struggling, am are you doing the, the triangle thingies too, or just- I'm one? replacing those triangle things in my left, yes. So you're highlighting uh, the whole thing? Yes, and what they will replace it with that. I put the, I put the carrots, or the triangles, the gator mounts, as I like to call them. I put them in there so I know I have to move that whole space. So it's highlight that whole thing, not just the city that's in between them. Correct. That. Okay, that's my only question, thanks. Perfect. You have to have a list of addresses first though, right? That's you need a list of addresses. Yeah. And that, with, and when you have that, that's that, when I start the mail merge, and I select recipients, and that's where I'm going to select that, that previously sale, save uh, list. Because I'm using this, I can hit preview results, and it's going to show me the result of the mail merge. And you notice it put Lisa's name in there. This is her address, and I look at that and I go, oh my word, I've made an error. Because right here, between the, the zip code and the, and the two, they're right up against each other. And that's why I preview. So I know I can do that. If I click the preview again, it goes away, and I can change and insert a little space in there. So preview puts it back, and you can see what that is what that looks like. The cool thing is I can actually, um, uh, if I keep hitting 
This will just put them back and forth. Um, from there, if you wanted to, you could look for additional pages by flipping through the pages right here. Or you could look for particular people. Look at that. I did it. I'm very proud of myself. I actually tried very hard not to get all of these out somewhere. So we won't send her one after all. So if, there needs to be a comma after the name. <laughs> it's polite. It's polite. So now we've got that. What else do we have? Any other possible errors? And then, not to be whatever, but <laughs> the address needed all caps. Is that like, ah, like too bold? Or is that how everybody is doing it? That's how mine have been. Yeah. Okay. So that's um, that is, mine and like since that. that's a direct pull from your spreadsheet, right? Like you would have you would want to add either you probably edit them all in your spreadsheet first if that was something you wanted to change um and it's not as easy as you can think but so but depending uh, oh i'm sorry and if you have to find your who what and why if you're sending 350 people you're getting caps bro if that's how it came but if i'm sending it to 10 people maybe i do take the time Depends on my who, what, and what, right? I think we want the U. That was my capitalized. I don't know. That's up to you. The one I found had a capital U. So. I kept my Kelly. <laughs> Kelly, decide this for everyone right now. Make the rules. I don't think so, Tony. Was it? We don't, like, U was in capitalized. Like, U? I don't think. No. Yeah. I don't see yeah. this. I got yours in front of me right now. Oh, okay. I left mine like that. Because that was how it was sent to me. I left it like that. My U is capital, and then my address is just normal. It's not a capital. So I pulled my addresses from the MLS. Mm -hmm. so it's going to totally depend where you yeah. so, yeah. so, so, so they're your, just, they source. just, they just blend just in normal. normal. Yep. So again, great questions, great options. Once you've got that, you've got the way you, you've found it, though, it is the way you like it. Um, you can fire it out right here, uh, merge to do document, um, all 13. So I have 13 there, but it's an extra thing. And from there, I actually have a list of 12 pages, 12 individual letters, all fired up, ready to go, and be put out there. So you did edit individual or just print documents? I went to uh, edit individual. Because if I print them, I've got to be ready to have, you know, I have all my paper ready so I have to go. This way I can save this document and print it at my convenience. And if I hit print right away, it's still sitting there going, what do I do with, with the rest of these? And at some point, you might want to save them or use this same set of things to import this stuff into command. That's somewhere in the follow up section. But for now, I recommend saving them into a document and then you can print them at your convenience by going file print are you for real huh like are you kidding me yeah. <laughs> oh, well no all the hours i spent with you with google sheets and crying and then texting and then yelling holy crap so are you are you a testimonial for excel in 399 yeah Yes. We're in Excel. It's free 99. It is free 99. I tried to do it on Google Sheets too after watching like half of a video. I watched the video and then there was a part two. And then I like emailed like, hey, can I have the second video? No one ever responded. So I got stuck halfway through and I didn't, I couldn't just like figure it out. And then when I did on Excel, it was way easier. Another testimony. I promise you, it's free 99. Thanks, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. Where's your brain? Questions? If I need to get Excel to work, I haven't done those in a while. Um, Office 365. Office 365. Yeah, okay, got it. I would just say one quick thing. This is amazing, and I hope those of you that were like doing it along with him, um, that's great because you're gonna probably better remember. I think. What I don't want you to do is get hung up on capital U or lowercase u or address or any of these things that we tend to 
spiral out about, and then we just don't do it. Because in the end, none of that really matters. If these don't land in mailboxes, then all of this was a waste of time. So don't get hung up on that. I think for now, unless you have a, like Scotty, if you want to try it differently, but Kelly is a great testimonial to this exact format. If this is the first time you're giving these a real try, just do this. You can always get creative later, but follow what we're talking about right now because it's going to be the, the quickest and easiest way for you to just get these in the mail. Which I know I said last week, and you know, I would love for you to have a stack of letters, but as I was thinking about it throughout the week, I was like, well, if we're all printing and labels and probably you're not gonna leave here today with your stack of letters to mail, but my hope is that you have your list, you know how to do mail merge, and you know what these next steps are so that you can get those letters in the mail by tomorrow. And there's no reason that, that you aren't getting these done immediately and maybe even getting calls this weekend. Anna sent them out on a Friday and like Saturday morning, I was coming home from something when you called me. She yeah. already had some, literally this person must have been walking from her mailbox to her house and calling Anna. Yep. And then on Monday I had two more people call me and then no one called me after that. Yeah. It was like, <laughs> they all, it was like immediate, like they, they went out and yep. then I got the calls and then they were done. Yeah. And they yeah. saw That's the letter. nice too is that it's right mm -hmm. away. Yeah. Yeah. I, oh. I don't think it's much of a decision. Well, I was going to say, I think they either see the letter and like, yeah, I'd like more information on this, or they throw the letter away and and they're not interested. Because of that, I decided instead of like doing all my letters and then sending them all out at once, that I would send them out as I get them done. So like if I send out like 20 every day or 10 every day instead of like 100 on one day, then maybe it'll be more consistent. Yeah. Yeah, however you want to do it. Gary Keller uses this term very regularly. Mofer is make offer for immediate response. And that is what this letter is. It is an offer made to you for an immediate response. Would you like to sell your home? Yes? No. That's all it is. And this is really a very key concept that he talks about quite a bit. When you're engaging people, just make an offer for an immediate response. Don't prolong the conversation any longer or any more than is necessary. Just make the offer and see what they want to do. You want to sell your house in 72 hours? I have a plan. Well, and if, oh, I don't. if it's immediate offer and their, their, their thought process is, I'm going to call this person, it maybe isn't a yes right now, but somewhere in their brain, they took the initiative to call you. And so that better be someone you are continuing to follow up with on a regular basis. Because they're they're thinking it, if even if they're not quite there yet. Kelly. The other thing I would recommend um, when you get when you start getting calls, um, make a spreadsheet or something like that. Because if you even I mean, or at least for me, even if you get three calls, you're like, which person was that? I talked to a person who said this. Which person was that? So I have an Excel spreadsheet made up, and it, you know, don't ask me. I mean, you can ask me. But I mean, it's, you know, date, name, phone number, email address, address. Um, if they give you a price that they're thinking, like if you can get that far with them to, hey, well, what's your price or what number do you have in mind or whatever. Um, I have home summary. So just like, you know, this is a five, three, two, two story with finished basement. And then I've got a notes thing. Wife is having a baby any day, wants me to call back beginning to mid February to come out, blah, 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 building out, you know. so. Take notes on it because you will you won't remember by the third call or whatever you get who's who and right and also then it's just a great thing to be able to reference back and then you can put this in command. And I was going to say, I would say that this should be going into your CRM and you're keeping all of those notes and you're setting up your tasks to remind you to call that person at the beginning of February or follow up in a month or whatever, whatever is appropriate for that person. But for you two, like this is just, you're putting it all into brevity as you're getting those calls. And for the rest of you, command, you're putting it into command and setting up those tasks so that you don't lose it. Having a separate, like, I like that you could look at your spreadsheet and be like, I got 16 calls on that one letter. So there's, yeah. there's value in that too. But ultimately, 
Um, as our businesses grow, we truly do need to be utilizing a CRM. The you know, command is a CRM, and we really should be using it as a CRM, as a system to keep track of our leads and remind us who we need to be following up with. Um, before we jump to scripts and everything, I want to just take a minute to talk about the address um, stamp debate. Um, Kelly, Anna, have you, I know Anna handwrites yours. Did you handwrite yours? Or you had, they were handwritten? <laughs> Tati has done it. We yep. had Jessica's daughter do it. Okay. Yeah. But they, they have all been handwritten. And also, um, yours were handwritten? And signed. The, yes. The letter is, is signed. Yeah. yeah, under your thank you or whatever. Yeah. Not by you. It's not well, by Jason and Tati. Yes. <laughs> um, and, 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 I, and I just, I'll I mean, everybody can yeah. do it different. I just, or they just put Kelly. Yeah, I would say that's fine. You've got your full name and contact information underneath. And we do it in blue ink. Blue ink. Mm -hmm. Just well, anything but black. Okay. Just to show that it's real. Okay. Yeah, I like go above and beyond to like make it stand out in the mail. Like I get the fancy stamps when I go to the post office that are like they have hearts on them mm -hmm. and say love and just so like when they get it, Something. they might think it came from their auntie or like from their sister. Like they don't know, yeah. you know? And then I do like, I use a whole bunch of different colored pens when I address it. Each so letter is a different it. colored pen. <laughs> no, I just, <laughs> I just get I use one That's color why these take life. you so long. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I love the sentiment behind the handwritten um address and i certainly think that it is definitely something you should consider doing i also think that that is one of those things that can get in the way of you accomplishing getting the letter in the mail so i think you all need to decide for yourselves are you going to hand write them and then time block or hire it done but get it done and get it done in a timely manner there's olivia's daughter um, I know, like, I've had my kids address envelopes for things before. Olivia's daughter. Sorry. Olivia, <laughs> Jessica's daughter. Um, or you're setting aside time to get it done. But what I, again, I think it would be a real shame if you got this far in the process and then this pile of envelopes sat on your desk for months because you're not taking the time to sit down and and write them out. And maybe like Anna said, you know, do 20 a day. You don't have to sit down and do 350 in one city, but make sure you have a plan to get that done. And if you're like me and you're thinking, I'm just never going to do that, then maybe you consider doing the address labels, which you can also do through Remind. Um, but I do agree that if you're following like the letter of this golden letter process, handwritten is the better way to go. And I believe that her camps do enough of them that they hire it out to a company that looks, they're, they're, yeah, it looks handwritten. Supposedly looks. I mean, we've right. all gotten yeah. those in the mail. I, I personally don't think that that makes much more of a difference than just putting the address label on, but I could be wrong. But yeah, they do, they pay to have the it addressed with like a, it looks like handwriting. Another thing I learned from Tati and Kelly, um, to not put a return address on the envelope. Um, like you were saying about, you know, maybe they'll think it's from their auntie. If it says Cedar Haven Real Estate Group, they know that this is from a realtor and there's a chance that they're just not even gonna open it. But if they get that envelope, it's handwritten and they're like, who's this from? They're almost positively gonna open it. What they do at that point is still up in the air, but they're gonna be curious who sent them this letter. Is where the single line comes into play. All I want you to do is do that. There's a wall of text. If you've taken the chance, you open it up and there's a wall of text, sales. Sales. Would I consider myself in my home? No, I would not. Garbage. <laughs> I would. I'm a, and then I have to make an offer has been made for immediate response. Yep. I either choose to respond or not. And it is an immediate response. It's what nobody puts it down there and calls you three months later. Right. Doesn't work like that. Right. It's an immediate response. Another and, little tip. Sorry. And when you get into deciding whether you're going to label them or not, your who, what, and why would matter significantly. Who am I sending this to? Why am I sending it to? 
those kinds of things. If you define that space ahead of time, 600 letters, I ain't handwriting 600. And I ain't paying somebody to write 600. This is literally me throwing as much against the wall, whatever sticks and wins. On the other side, there's 11 people I've selected in this neighborhood, absolutely handwriting every one of those. Because of the 11 I picked, and I picked them for a specific reason, I want to make sure I get in touch with them. Um, I was going to say, just with the envelopes, um, save yourself a lot of headache and get the envelopes that you just tear off the adhesive thing so you're state. not leaking or taking a spot mm -hmm. yeah. or whatever. I I don't don't What's the sitcom? <laughs> What's the sitcom where she licked the envelopes and that oh, George Costanza's yeah, yeah, fiance died from a uh, yeah. Go to Costco. <laughs> I just went to Costco and they have like the big cases of envelopes and it's like 500 envelopes and they're all peel and stick. It was only like ten dollars. Oh, what? Yeah, and I know they're they look like this. I know a lot of people like four I took Kim worked really hard on colored. And then Purple envelopes. Yeah. I went to Target last time I and one. I had to lick them all, and it was like ten dollars for like fifty of them or something. You know what I mean? So I it was way more expensive. So like Costco is three ninety nine. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> I've Costco got two pieces. Uh, <laughs> Costco's exactly. always been my friend. I love Costco. <laughs> all right, let's talk a little bit about scripts. Um, so you've done all the things, the remind, you know who you're sending these to, you've done the fancy mail merge thing, you addressed them however it is you chose to address them, and you put them in the mail. And now you see what happens. And again, it's probably going to happen within a few days. This isn't a, a long game where now you're waiting weeks to hear from somebody. Most likely, if there's going to be a response, you're going to get that response pretty quickly. So you need to be ready to go with that conversation. Um, again, the script really truly depends on your reason for sending out that letter. If you legitimately have a buyer that you are searching for, then you're probably going to focus more on questions about does this house fit what your buyer is looking for. However, what if you get a couple questions in and it's not it's not the right fit they don't really have much of a backyard and a backyard is a, a deal breaker for your buyer they have kids and a dog and they want a nice big backyard, are you going to be like well, thank you for your time bye. No now you want to flip it a little bit and talk about the market. And I would say something like, you know, I'm not sure that this would be the best fit for this particular buyer, but I can tell you this. There are many, many buyers out there right now looking for homes. And if you are going to consider selling it to this one buyer that I'm working with, I'd love to have a conversation with you about actually getting it on the market, getting you multiple offers and getting you top dollar. Do not send them a CMA. You can cut yourself off at the knees. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I shot myself in the foot because the first four that I got from the Shakopee, mm -hmm. I was trying to oversell, oversell. Please use me. Please, please, please. I'll send you a CMA. We can talk value. I know. They got the, C the CMA. Two of them went with someone else because I followed back up and the other two decided, eh, I'm going to wait just a little bit. Mm -hmm. That would have been my in to set an appointment to meet them face to face. And then that would have been the deal. Don't send them the CMA because they'll ask you for it. Oh, oh sure. Because they just want to know if that was a hard one. Yeah. Okay, so when they ask you for it, and you don't want to finish the question. I would say to them, hey, look, what works for you to get together? Because it'll yeah. take me a hot minute to put this together and I'll come just and I use the whole script of, you know, I, I can get it down to like a thirty to fifty thousand dollar range, but seeing it in person is gonna help me solidify that price. Yeah. And then I bring net sheets with like eight yeah. figures. <laughs> you know, I do like three per sheet and I'll do three different sheets. And like take out the sheet that yeah, I've done that pocket, too. And like, when I get there and I'm like, okay, 540 is where we at. I, I bring the one out that says 530, 540, 550. Not the one that said 490. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> or the but one that says eight. 6, 625. Yes. 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 Oh, yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah. Yep. Green carpet. No, mm -hmm. no the, the, definitely the trick is to set that appointment. I agree with you 100% mm -hmm. and it not is. give that information mm -hmm. away. And the reason is, as a professional, I need to see your home so that I know where it falls within the comparable sales in your area. 
And that comes down to updates, it comes down to your floor plan, it comes down to what, you know, how all of that comes together. Um, when are you available? And I, I am probably a softer touch. I come more from, let's have a conversation about what it would take to get your house ready to sell and what the market looks like right now. And then you decide if this is the right time for you. But it's information. I can't give you accurate, this is like, what we've talked about with your lead. I can't give you accurate information if I haven't stood in your house and seen what it looks like and the condition that it's in. Because even over the phone, I can say, you know, have you updated, you know, what updates have you done? Well, we updated our kitchen and then you get there and they updated their kitchen in 1992. It's not updated. With IKEA storage. <laughs> right, right. You know, so even over the phone, you're not getting a full picture the same way you would if you're standing the there. Way. You know where they're underselling it. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I have so many sellers that talk to me about what terrible condition their house is in. It needs so much work. Come over and help us figure it out. And I get there, and it's fine. Like, this is a beautiful. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. It would sell in five would, seconds. Yeah, yeah. Like, don't even do anything to it. Let's get it up. Yeah. Kelly, I want you to speak to this. But one of the things that I loved about the way you handle this is when you get them on the phone, you get on the computer. And you, you look at their house if you can right it's been listed in the yeah. past so can you tell us a little bit about how you handle that yeah i just um you know they you know give me the address that they're calling about so then i'll look quick on the mls and hopefully it's there in spirit branch and sometimes there wasn't because they were um they were construction usually and or a lot of times new construction they were the first owners and so the builder didn't necessarily put them on there so if they weren't there i'd at least go to um like dakota county um, GIS website and look it up there. So, you know, you could at least see a picture of what the front of the house looked like, um, you know, the, like an aerial to see, okay, are they backed up to a pond? Are they backed up to a busy road? Is it, you know, the little walking path or whatever? Um, and then I would verify with them typically, um, especially if there was no MLS or if there was an MLS and it showed no finished basement, you know, maybe they finished the basement and they have, you know, 1200 more square feet than what the information you have there. If there's nothing on the um, on the MLS, then I would be looking at the um, the county records, and then say, okay, the county is showing you know four bedrooms, three baths. You know, is is this correct? And you know, whatever. And maybe yeah, maybe no, nope, we finished this, and so now we have an extra bedroom and an extra bathroom. And so just to verify that you know what you're that you're looking, you know, thinking the same thing. Um, and kind of on the same page as what is, you know, as far as what, what the house itself is. One of the things that you told me that, that stuck with me is when you get on the phone with someone and you pull the house up on the MLS or on the Dakota County, whatever county mm -hmm. website. Dakota County, obviously, I think most of us probably use that a lot. I do love the way they give you more information than some other counties. Anyway, you get the house in front of you. And then you said you'll usually start off by saying, oh, you know, that has great curb appeal or, mm -hmm. oh, I love those hardwood floors. You throw out something about the house um, in a positive way. And sure, you're buttering them up. I mean, of course you are. But it also is going to, in my mind, put them at ease a little bit because it's going to feel less salesy and more like, oh, they just cut complimented my house like who doesn't love to get a compliment like that so to just to kind of get into that conversation but you know, start off with you know oh those are really pretty window boxes do you still have those on the you know front of your house whatever so okay other thoughts or questions on scripts i think it's really important when you're thinking about what your goal of this letter is yes Goal of the letter is to get an appointment. Yes. So when they call whether you have a buyer you, or not, your goal is to get an appointment. When they call you, you still have not gotten an appointment. So your goal is still just to get an appointment. Yep. That is the purpose of the call. And if you pick up and talk to the person on the on that with remembering that the goal is to set an appointment, it helps direct the conversation. Now, there are words you're going to say and things you're going to do, but remember that the goal is not to sell their house. Right. The goal is to get the point. Yep. You are so much better in person than you are over the phone. Trust me, I've met all of you. I haven't talked <laughs> to any of you on the phone for the most part. You're better in person. I promise you. <laughs> no, you're funny. <laughs> Andrew. <right. laughs> 
One hundred percent. I think that's my biggest regret is like not setting the appointment. Yeah. Because like sometimes they don't talk to you again after that. Like sometimes you get them on the phone and then they like stop responding to or answering your calls or because they realize like you don't really have a buyer for their house, so now they're done. Mm -hmm. Instead of like focusing on trying to meet with them in person so you can talk to them more and like explain things to them. Exactly. And trying to explain the market, trying to explain the reason that they should list it instead of sell it to just one buyer who may or may not exist. Trying to get into all of that over the phone, there's just not the same connection there. But if you can get in their front door, they've given you a tour of their house, you're sitting down at the kitchen table, and now you're able to really talk it all out. Here are the comps, here are what homes are selling for. Here's a boat where your house would sell. If you look at these, it was priced at 550, but it sold at 610. If this one, you know, you're, you're talking to them about how to maneuver through this market. There's just, you, you're showing your expertise and you're building that rapport. And they may not say, all right, get that sign in our yard today, but they're more likely to continue staying in touch with you until they are ready to make a move because you've now shown them that you're the expert. And you invited them, they invited you into their house. Mm -hmm. They know you're not like a creepy, weirdo you know, stranger. Yeah, but at least not yet. Right. Yeah. I mean, I am. I mean, <laughs> you are Shane, but I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Maybe, maybe they are. <laughs> right. So let's talk a little bit about you, if you have a legit buyer, you're maybe asking questions about that, but I still, like I said, your goal is still to set the appointment, whether that house works for your buyer or not. But what if you were sending that letter and you don't really have a buyer, you were using the we in the sense of the office, like someone around here must have a buyer for that area, for that neighborhood. Um, what are your thoughts on how to handle that? Because I know some of you have gotten these calls back and people are, are they think that you sent that letter to them specifically for their house, specifically. Like someone drove by it and was like, oh my gosh, Shane, I love that house on Main Street. Can you see if it's for sale? Yeah. And so that they're calling you with that expectation, like, yeah, yeah, we would, if you have a buyer, we would definitely be interested in selling. How's the conversation go from there? Because now you're panicking because you don't really have a buyer. I start with, well, before I can tell you if it would really work for the buyer, I've seen the exterior, great curb appeal, the house is awesome, but I need to know the inside because this particular family has needs with kids and everything else. However, if it doesn't work for this buyer, I have a team of, out of my, office so i work with a team of agents that i can guarantee you in this market i could still bring you multiple offers with multiple buyers because we've got i go into the buyer means and i said i can open this up right now and tell you how many people but i have to get the information because i can't tell my buyers that they would this is the one if your house is three bedrooms you're still looking for that appointment right I'm just getting a foot in the door confident versus i guarantee you yeah see. Like, we're not that guy. Stop that. <laughs> we're not Stop these guys. That. We don't guarantee anything. But oh, we're I'm confident. confident. Yeah, yeah, that's like, yeah. Yep. <laughs> and I also, I love that everyone knows what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah. Like this. It's not Jesus I'm talking about. Okay. <laughs> 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 I didn't have to look. You knew. Yes. You knew. You knew. Yeah, you knew. Felt you felt it. it. You felt it. You might think he's Jesus. Yeah, yeah right. I also think, um, really part of the yes, you, to talk about how we have a whole, a, a whole office of agents um you know i'm confident somebody would have a buyer but it's not even just that like let's let's talk about getting it on the mls getting it in front of every agent in in the state of minnesota every agent that has a buyer looking in this area and and see what happens and i think part of it is talking to them because it's so funny when people will say well if you have a buyer i mean yeah we would consider selling if you have a buyer oh you don't really have a buyer then we're not interested <laughs> well you were going to sell it a minute ago why wouldn't you like helping them understand the benefits to putting it on the market to getting it in front of thousands and thousands of buyers when there's such low inventory and getting multiple offers and getting a strong offer um, so it's kind of helping them get there i think the best way to do that again is to get in the door that having that conversation over the phone is overwhelming and if 
in all likelihood, they're going to end the conversation or they're not going to call you back. But if you set the appointment and say, yep, you know what? The best way for me to determine if this is the right fit for any of my buyers is to come in and take a look. And then let's talk a little bit about this market and what it looks like. Well, and then what you, you, what you said, the fit is key because some are tuned in to like, this is the only house your buyer picked, even if they're thinking. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, if we only went after one house, right. We're looking at houses like yours, and we won't know until we see the inside. But if I only sent one letter, I wouldn't be giving my buyer very many chances by not sending multiple letters. Because they'll ask that too, like, you How many letters this, did yeah, you send? Whatever. So we'll talk to your neighbors. Yeah, they, they want to feel really, really <laughs> special that they're the only one, but you kind of have to diffuse that a little bit. Yeah. Right there. Or people will say, like, you know, how how did you get my contact information? How did you know my, you know, that my house had four bedrooms or whatever. You, you want to tread a little bit lightly, but all of that, I mean, anybody can go on Dakota County website and find that you information. You don't have to answer by saying I'm a professional creep. You right, yes, I've been stalking you, yeah, <laughs> yes. Yep, I'm a professional, I have access to, to that information, and I, th this is the type, this is the kind of agent I am. I'm gonna go out looking for the best fit for my clients. Um, and then sell yourself. Yeah, absolutely. You do it best in person. And the thing is, if you, Even you, <laughs> you do better in person. if you if you don't get the appointment the first try, that first conversation, and I really do agree with Jason that that's your soul. When they when you pick up your phone, you answer your phone, and you find out that they're responding to a golden letter, you should have like laser focus on getting an appointment set. But if you don't, we also know that it can take like eight to twelve asks to get an appointment. So now it's great, can I follow up with you? And then that's where that follow-up piece is so important, whether it's a spreadsheet, command, whatever CRM you're using, but that you are keeping track of that conversation, what you talked about, so you'll remember the next time. And then you know to follow up with them again. Maybe you drop a note card in the mail that just says, hey, thanks so much for reaching out to me. It was great to connect and I'd love to help you when the time comes for you to sell. Um, or I'd love it if you kept my team or myself in mind, you know, for you, for yourself and any real estate needs you have, whatever, but some little touch. And then now you've got their phone number, they called you. So now you're setting up a call again in a few weeks. All right. This is where I go down the thing. We don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to keep it short. I'm going to keep it simple. Everyone you send this mail to is a contact. Everyone you send this mail to is a contact. You filled out that thing at the beginning of the year and said, my goal is to make X number of dollars, and it came back and said, you need 30,000 leads. And you thought, that's and you're like, I quit. <laughs> no, that's that number. Every single person you send this to is a contact. The ones that respond, that's an opportunity. Are, yeah. That is an opportunity. It goes in your opportunity pipeline right away. Because that person now is in cultivate. You are literally cultivating that person. And you are looking to set an appointment, which, by the way, is the next stage of the opportunity point pipeline, right? So you're putting them in there. They might move back and forth over the course of your discussion with this person through that opportunity pipeline. But the minute they engage in this two way conversation with you about selling their home, they became an opportunity. And that changes, and the goal of opportunities is you could look at the opportunity pipeline every day and get a list of everyone in your opportunity pipeline in command and think, I need to market to these individuals distinctly and differently than everyone in my contact. Right? This contact is about moving them from unmet to met, and from met to be doing business with. In the opportunity pipeline, my goal is to make them an appointment and then to get them the list and get them out of here and then get them started all over again. So contacts and opportunities, two different things. If you send a gold letter, they are now a contact, like magic, like instantly. And anytime they call back, they become an opportunity. You manage your opportunities very different than you manage your contacts. And that's why it's distinct and important. Yes? I just want to throw, um, I know we're wrapping up here, so I made a couple of notes while we were talking that my coach has shared with me. If mm -hmm. I, can I share it? Yeah, Absolutely, yeah, okay. please do. Um, if you're if you set an appointment with someone try to get a number from them first see if you can get a number what do you think it's worth 
or you know what have your neighbors sold for you? What do you what number do you have in mind? And that can really help because I mean Spirit of Ranch and there's five hundred thousand, there's one point two million dollars. Yeah. And they could be the same house. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so it's it's really good to get a number so you have an idea of what they're thinking. Um, you want to, I had one guy reach out to me via text. So we were texting back and forth. And I said, oh, I texted him back and then I didn't hear back. He's like, you have to get him on the phone. You, you have to, who's in, who's in control? If he's texting and you're waiting for a text back from him, who's in control? I'm like, he is. He's like, yep, you got to be in control. Um, ask questions, you know, just like all of the other scripts that we have. Um, why are you thinking of moving? Where are you moving to? Um, when do you need to be there? What will that do for you? You know, all those questions we've heard a million times. Um, uh, just that kind of thing. So, yeah, that's all I have right now. Yep. I think that's great. I like the getting, I always hesitate going on a listing appointment and asking someone, well, like, well, what, are you, what, what are you hoping to sell it for? But I do think in a situation like that, you're engaging, first off, how serious and they are. Yeah. Like, are they stick. throwing out just a bonkers number? Yeah. Mm -hmm. or are they like yeah this is you know may might be a little high in this yeah. market i think most sellers are thinking a little high but um but it's within reason then you know that there's actually maybe some real possibility there if they come back with a high number you can go in the house look at their house and go they need to do some, tell them what they need to do to get it yeah at the end of the day you know you want to have you want to sell for that price you're going to need to redo this kitchen my friend you may be able to get multiple offers if you well, that, opportunity. Yeah, that's why right. I like to show them the sale price and the, the list price and the sale price on the comps mm -hmm. to show them like people aren't listing where it sells. They're listing below that, letting the buyers starting the price. price. Yep. It's very, it, it, uh, sellers it is are excited to... about starting price. Buyers think it's some kind of removal. Yeah. What do you mean it costs more than that? Say the store value. <laughs> like an auction right now. Helpful. Yes. Who's gonna go send some golden letters? Who's who's gonna get golden letters in the mail by we'll say end of day Friday? All right. That, that I like it. Right there. <laughs> that one. No, He's raising his okay. hand for her. <laughs> Monique, you're so that's an interesting just question really fast. Just so with all of us doing these so much, is there any you know where I'm going with yep. this, don't you? Just continue on, just like not, or do we do a small Facebook group and anybody if they wanted a little gold letter group, like, hey, I'm sending this number to this, just because I would feel so bad sending letters to somebody that's already working hard at sending letters, especially from our office. I claim the whole self metro. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 we all we all got to go I know. north. <laughs> and that's kind of the thing, breaking it down by neighbor, like, I'll go home and I'll do my end of shock beat because I'm no friend of the shock beat, but the cast do Apple Valley. Yeah, we've well, heard, heard I, I, I think you should throw that out in the Facebook group because okay, I think nice. that I I do I love the idea behind that. Right. I also know that if I have a buyer that's looking in a specific area, I probably don't care if you guys have sent letters there. I'm still gonna send letters. So I think it would be nice to know, but we also cannot have the expectation that if I've claimed the entire self metro that nobody in this <laughs> office is gonna mail to this stuff. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah. Come on. Now. Sorry, I mean, you know, I only decided to offer this class after I had already papered the entire <laughs> Quincy's market. Ideally, under under not under nine hundred dollars. Ramp wear. Then I should yes. I was totally down with I'll never make the whole thing. Yeah. 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 I can't, I don't think I should get caught up in that because, again, it's another reason to talk yourself out of doing it, and that is the future. I gotta get that too. Well, or you 